الرجیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین بار الخلائق اجمعین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین وخاتم النبیین اب القاسم المصطفی محمد وآل بیت طیبی نطرین ولانۃ اللہ علی آدا اہم اجمعین من العن علاقیام یوم الدین اما بعد رسپیکٹ برادر اینڈ سسٹرز دس ویک وی have milad of 11th imam of ahli al-bayt imam hasan al-askari alayhi salatu was salam allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad and inshallah with this in mind we will continue that series of discussion which we started last week akhlaq and ahkam akhlaq the first important issue in the chapter of akhlaq is this akhlaq is related to our relationship with people how we act and react with other people around us akhlaq is responsible to guide us and command us our relationship with others i do not want to go in technical discussions this is a every week inshallah discussion very short and to the point and this issue of our relationship with the people is so important so crucial that when quran praises our nabi and our rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam allahumma salli ala muhammad who is best of the creations who is most beloved of allah by saying or addressing innaka la ala khuluqin azim you are on the best of akhlaq and when he himself defines explains purpose of his prophethood and mission he says innama bu'istu li utammama makarim al akhlaq that i have been sent down appointed as nabi to complete the qualities of akhlaq this is so important so crucial and similarly successors of the prophet imams after our nabi and rasul sallallahu alaihi wa ali wasallam hai salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ha allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad has greatest of emphasis on akhlaq 
especially on practical akhlaq they themselves were best examples of good akhlaq and they expected from their followers and shia also to be examples of good akhlaq of good relationship with the people now imam hasan askari alayhi salatu was salam who's the 11th imam of ahli al-bayt salamullah alayhi majma'in was one of those known for his good akhlaq the way he treated people the way he interacted with the people just one issue marhum e kolaini in kafi narrate something very interesting he says that abbasides used to appoint most terrible people for surveillance over imams like imam askari alayhi salatu wassalam those who have greatest of hatred for ahl bayt and worst of akhlaq no manners no etiquettes no way of talking and speaking marhum kulaini says that in the last part of life of imam askari alayhi salatu wassalam abbasis appointed someone by the name of ali narmish as in charge or somebody to control imam's movements and he was one of the most well known enemies of ahl al-bayt used to hate ali and ahl al-bayt by his name was ali and also a characterless person a person who has no character no respect no way of talking and speaking and khulaini rahmatullah alayhi narrates and similarly marhum majlisi in bihar that in less than few days after being head of or controller of imam's movements and is spying over imam and being direct contact with imam this man was completely changed in less than 2 or 3 days this man with the worst of character and akhlaq and manners and etiquettes comes out of house of imam askari with the worst hate for ahl al-bayt he used to have saying that allahu a'lam hay so yaj'al risalatahu allah knows better where to place his message allah knows better where to place his risalat and message in a family which is the most deserving for it this is akhlaq of imam askari alayhi salatu wassalam now just one hadith as we in this regard very interesting for plenty of hadith about akhlaq from imam askari is narrated but one hadith i would like to draw your attention brothers and sisters please in that hadith salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad Imam Askari saying to the followers of Ahl al-Bayt this sentence Look you know the same issue of relationship with the people interaction with the people He says qulu lin nas husna mu'minuhum wa mukhalifuhum Allahu akbar speak with people with good akhlaq husna in good manner with respect mu'minuhum wa mukhalifuhum 
people does not matter among them those who are mu'min believers followers of ahlul bayt wa mukhalifuhum and the people among the people who are not mu'min and believer not followers of ahlul bayt not even maybe muslim mukhalif is very broad and am and general and then imam explain explains ammal mu'minun why mu'min why you must speak with believers nicely with good akhlaq wa yabsutu lahum wajha result of good akhlaq and good way of talking and speaking to them will be that their face will open up wa yabsutu lahum wajha they will feel nice about you they will have good experience of you wamal mukhalifun and what about opposition why we must speak to them nicely wa yukallimuhum bil mudarat ila ijtizabihim ila al iman and speak to the opposition with nice why because by speaking to them with mudarat with softness with coming along with them without arguing them and being rough to them and disrespectful to them le ijtizab bihim ila al iman because this akhlaq of yours will attract them toward islam and iman and faith akhlaq is not only for shia akhlaq is not only good akhlaq for muslims good akhlaq is a character inside the nature if someone got a good akhlaq he got a or she got a good akhlaq with everybody with mu'min with shia with muslim with non muslim with the kafir even this good way of talking qulu lin nas husna speak to the people with good akhlaq with good manners with respect with humility husna mu'minin will be attracted toward you mukhalifin opposition will be attracted toward iman and islam this is imam hasan askaris advice to his followers salawat ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now let me come to the part of ahkam again in the light of milad of imam askari alaihi salatu wassalam last week we discussed couple of hadith as a prelude to our discussion which mainly from imam sadiq alaihi salatu wassalam explaining about importance of ahkam to know what is halal and what is haram to know what is wajib and what is makruh and what is mustahab and what is mubah very important i don't want to now repeat i narrated for you couple of hadith now the second part i want to take it further tonight in the light of the teachings of ahlul bayt ahlul bayt encourage us toward knowing ahkam of allah halal and haram of allah what is law you know legislation of sharia that's what is very crucial and important for us to know and i said last thursday night in our own community this aspect has been greatly neglected unfortunately small issues we don't know sometime anyway the second part which i started also and i said imam sadiq used to say imam baqir used to say salamullah alaihi ma that ask us learn from our hadith what is halal what is haram how to perform salat how to go to hajj how to give zakat how to pay khums how to fast how to do other things in the life but then also one last part if you remember in our last thursday night we said imam also referred people that if you do not have access to us 
does not mean that you should not worry about halal and haram. Because we don't have any more access to imam, so we must keep quiet. No. Imam Sadiq insisted that go and ask from Abu Basir. Go ask from Yunus ibn Abdul Rahman. Go ask from Zurarat ibn Ayun. Hmm? And now tonight from Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salatu wassalam, I would like to bring this important issue. Because Imam Hassan Askari alayhi salatu wassalam prepared his followers. Now I don't have time to give you a great deal of explanation and background. The Shayyu and followers of Ahlul Bayt is spreaded across the Islamic State. Quite a serious number. A lot of them with good resources. And Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, last few Imams did very important steps they took to organize them. But one major issue, one major challenge in front of Imam Askari alayhi salatu wasalam and Imam Hadi was that very soon our Shia and followers will face situation of ghaibat, occultation. Means what? They will not have access to Imam. They will not have direct access to Imam to knock the door of Imam and ask, is this halal? Is this haram? Is this is wajib? Is this makru? Is this mustahab? How to do that? No, they don't have. They will not have access. Now what will happen? Where they will go? Sufficient information is given. But that information requires processing. That information requires organization. That inf information requires a particular procedure until it reaches to a normal man in the street. For that purpose, Imam Askari والسلام, prepared his followers to understand and follow ulama. Now, this is the hadith from Imam Askari. من الفقهاء صائنا لنفسه حافظا لدينه مخالفا لحباء مطيعا لأمر مولاه فللعوام أن يقلدوه Imam said when you do not have access to us أهل البيت when you cannot reach to an Imam Imam is in غيبت you should leave deen you should not worry about haral and haram no Still, responsibility is there. And those from our fuqaha, from our jurists, from our scholars of deen, fuqaha, those who thoroughly and deeply and properly understand deen, what they should do? With following qualities, they are protectors of themselves. Hafizan ledine. They are guards of deen of Allah. Muti an le amre maula. Obedient to commands of Allah. Mukhalif an le hawa. They are alim. But they are also obedient to Allah. They are alim. But they are also guard of deen. They are alim. But they are also taking care of their nafs. They are alim. But they are also opposing shaitan and desires of their nafs. If these qualities are there, so what? Falil awame an yukallidu. Responsibility of awam and masses is to taklid them, to follow them, to ask them what is right and what is wrong, what is haram and what is halal. That's how, brothers and sisters, this whole institution of taqlid started in the period of ghaibat and occultation of Imam alayhi salatu wassalam, Shia must follow faqih. But jami us shara'it, faqih who has all the qualities. Faqih who has all the conditions. Not any faqih, amazingly. Imam Askari in the last part of this hadith says, 
Shia remember that all the fuqaha are not like that. Few of them are like that. Few of them have this criteria and this quality. And from there, brothers and sisters, chapter of taqlid start. You ask why we must follow marja, why we must follow one ayatullah. This is the command of imam. That if you do not have access to imam, if you do not have expert in religion and deen, follow expert of deen with following qualities and criteria. And there, taqlid starts. Inshallah. Next week, little bit more about taqlid. We will talk and speak and move into the next discussion. Inshallah. Once again, we offer our congratulations to Imam of our time on the birthday of his father and 11th Imam of Ahlul Bayt, Imam Askari alayhi salatu was salam and all the followers of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu was salam. Salawat ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Inshallah, don't forget tomorrow, of course, is one very important fundraising.